features topics of interest to Montgomery County residents, businesses, and visitors. Here now is your host, Deborah Milo. Good morning and welcome to Montgomery Mosaic. I'm Brian Robertson for Deborah Milo. Thanks so much for tuning in to today's show. I hope you're having a great day so far. I know it's a little cold out there, but we'll try and keep you warm. We've got a good show for you today. We're going to talk about what's happening at the Montgomery County Department of Liquor Control just in time for the holiday season. Here to talk about it is Bob Dorfman, the department's director. Hi, Bob. Hi, Brian. How are you? Happy to be here. Great. Thank you for being here. Let's jump right in. So you've got a wealth of experience in hospitality, food service, and restaurants, uh, mainly from the private sector. Marriott, Trust House Services Group, and Five Guys uh, are all on your resume. So tell us a little bit about your business background and how it supports what you're doing today for the government. Uh, obviously, it's uh, been on the diverse side. Uh, I've worked for big companies running big businesses. I've worked with other friends and business associates and helping them uh, develop marketing strategies uh, to go to to go to market uh, with their businesses. And I've owned uh, several small businesses. So I think I've okay. uh, got a perspective in uh, several different different ways. Okay, very different from uh, what you're doing now. How have you made that transition? It's been an interesting transition, given that uh, all of my experience is in the private sector. Um, and as a matter of fact, uh, it's unique and different in that I had very little knowledge of uh, the Department of Liquor Control. Having lived in Montgomery County for 36 years, uh, I knew very little about what I was getting myself into when I got into it. Uh, but I'm uh, ecstatic and happy that I have, and um, uh, I'm, I'm proud to talk about the improvements that we've made. All right. Well, let's, let's uh, talk about uh, uh, those changes. Obviously, uh, coming into the position, um, you had a lot to learn. You brought yourself up, up to speed. But once you did the analysis, um, what did you find and um, what did you do about it? What I found is, after uh, not living through it as much, but having read about it and heard about the experiences that, uh, you know, the public in some respects, businesses on the other hand, uh, were experiencing with the DLC and uh, in years previous, um, the DLC was not doing a very good job. Uh, it wasn't being run as a business. It was primarily being run as an agency that kind of limped along for years and years until some serious problems occurred okay. from both a warehouse operation standpoint and primarily a customer service standpoint. So um, what I've learned is that uh, this has got to be run as a very well-run business. Uh, and there's no reason in the world why not. And I think we've made the kinds of improvements to help us get there. And the focus has to be on the customer. This has to be a customer-first approach to things. And I think my background, particularly with Marriott for 15 years, gave me the, uh, the foundation and uh, uh, all the good reasons why customer service in any business is um, the first and foremost thing you have to impart uh, on your staff. So tell us a little bit about, so what's different? What's different now? Well, we've uh, we made some very good hires. Um, about a year and a half ago, we brought in two senior operations executives from the private sector. John Seltner, who is the president of Premium Beer Distributing, which is one of the largest beer distributors on the East Coast. Uh, so he's got clearly uh, not only a customer service perspective, okay. but a good operations background. And uh, Mike Vogel, who, was, uh, who worked for Coca-Cola in their distribution business. And so both of them, having dealt with customers on the outside, uh, brought that customer approach, but more importantly, they had the experience and the knowledge to come in and make some significant changes and improvements to our warehouse operations. Okay. Um, so now um, you've touched on this um, um, already, providing exceptional customer service is a top priority. Can you give us some examples of uh, specific uh, uh, operational changes that have been made? Well, there's operational changes, and then, of course, there's the whole issue of kind of culture change without okay. kind of over overutilizing that word. But, in fact, it is a culture change. Um, you know, people have worked for the county, and uh, we've got a great staff, and uh, they've done with all good intentions for years and years and years. But it's very hard when you work for, the, for a county government and believe that uh, customers uh, do have choices. Uh, and so you've got to act as if the customer is not only first, but that we have to earn their business every day. So the changes that we've made are as much cultural as they are uh, procedural. Our communication center has been stepped up, and we do a much better job in communicating to our licensees and our residents, but more importantly, being able to answer the questions that they have when they call. We're implementing just this week a test of a real-time customer feedback kiosk uh, 
uh, that's going to be at the uh, exit of each of our stores. We have two of them going into our warehouse cashier's office and then one going into our office lobby that gives us real-time feedback on how our customer experience has been. We have stepped up our customer service training. We're working not only with the county training department but with local colleges on putting together more advanced types of customer service training to get people focused on how better to answer and address customers' needs. Uh, we are being more proactive in uh, our responses uh, in our communications with our customers and our suppliers, much more open communications. And as importantly, we brought in a senior marketing officer into our business, uh, which is, was an important step. I mean, we operate a $300 million business, which is not the biggest business in the world, but certainly not small. There's no $300 million business that I'm familiar with that does not have a sales and marketing component. And so if we're going to treat this like a business and learn how to act and, 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 and do things in a sales and marketing way to generate better sales, better sale items, uh, all of the customer kinds of needs that we need to bring in a customer service or a, a senior marketing officer to help us do that. And she's got a world of background and experience. Okay. Uh, those are, I think, prob- primarily the, uh, the key ingredients to what we've done to improve our, our customer service. Okay. Well, I want to uh, just uh, mention that um, I want to thank you for listening to Montgomery Mosaic on Talk Radio 1450 WOL. I'm Brian Roberts, in for Deborah Milo. And today I'm talking to Bob Dorfman, the county's Montgomery County's Department of Liquor Control Director, about recent changes at the department. So uh, let's, uh, let's continue. Uh, obviously, um, there have been a lot of changes uh, inside the retail stores uh, where people like me shop. So uh, what's happening? Uh, tell me about the, the changes uh, in the uh, in the retail stores. Sure. Uh, it, and it's definitely, we have 27 retail stores. So, of course, um, you know, we, we do provide both uh, beer, wine, and liquor products for sale. And uh, we have much the same kinds of challenges there as we as we did elsewhere. And, and that's the customer service side of things. Again, we need to make sure our people are stepped up on their customer service training and understand that customers do have a choice and that uh, we want them to come in and have the best experience possible. Um, It's a customer first attitude. Um, We're reconfiguring, reconcepting, and eventually rebranding our stores. Um, Some people have characterized some of our stores as 1950 Soviet bloc kinds of looking stores. And uh, that's true because not a lot of uh, not a lot of money has been reinvested in terms of the improvements in those stores. It, you know, the, the Trader Joe's and the Whole Foods today are the kinds of shopping experiences that you know customers really want to have. They want to come in, they want to browse, they want to be educated, they want to be serviced well. Uh, in in our particular case, I think most people come in knowing what they want, and then uh, buying buying it and then leaving the store. So we want to provide a unique and friendly, fun shopping experience. That's going to include things like tasting rooms, education rooms, uh, and unique merchandising uh, that they haven't seen before. Much, again, like a Trader Joe's or a Whole Foods where it's just fun to go in and browse and shop. And that's going to result in better uh, better sales for us as a, as a, a county. Okay. And uh, so how can customers find out about existing stock, new products, special sales, all that before they come to the store? Well, a couple things. We have a, uh, a product search portal, which they can avail themselves of, which uh, gives them a list of everything that we carry. Uh, and it gives them information about the product itself. Uh, the local advertising that we do, uh, we do that on a regular basis. So people are familiar with uh, a good number of the products that we do sell and the variety of products we sell and particularly the sale items that we have offered. We have a newsletter that goes out. Uh, we have a tasting email that goes out every single week. Uh, and you can actually open up that email and it'll tell you by store what the products are that we're tasting that week uh, in those stores. And it's pretty exciting. People really, really enjoy that. And then we have a, a monthly sale email that goes out that talks about what is on sale for the month. Um, we are just being more proactive from a staff standpoint to how we communicate with our customers and making them aware of those kinds of things that we're doing so that there are none of these surprises and that people know what it is to kind of look forward to from one week uh, to the next. And we're adding new feature displays. We're starting to display new arrivals and new products so that when people walk into our stores, uh, they know what's new, what's different, what's Maryland, what's Montgomery County. Uh, And so uh, I think the experience in introducing them to uh, those new types of products are a way of making them aware of these things. Okay. And you talked a a bit about uh, customers wanting to be educated when they come in. So how are you accomplishing that? Are there, is, is, uh, is that, 
that staff training, additional staff signage. What what are you what what are you doing? Well, product training is really important, and that's the thing that we're stepping up and using our suppliers to help us with that. Uh, people who walk into our store should expect that our staff knows at least what they know, or preferably much more than what they know, and they're looking for advice and direction. So when they come in and they ask for, I'm going to so-and-so's house or it's a holiday party and they're serving such and such, we should be able to give them good recommendations on what that product is. Uh, again, overall pro uh, customer service, uh, making sure that people are acknowledged when they walk in the store, making sure that they're able to find what they're looking for, being able to address any particular questions that they have, and more importantly, uh, making suggestive selling so that when they leave, they can talk about how we've helped to better serve them in getting them the needs that they're looking for. Okay. And uh, you may have touched on this uh, before, but when you're talking about uh, customer service training, uh, are there certain kinds of are there changes in the way uh, people's performance is being measured? Are there, um, I, don't want to know, I don't know if incentive is the right word when we're talking about government services, but mm -hmm. some kind of recognition, you know, that sort of thing. Can you talk about it's that? It's a great question. We just, uh, within the last month, had our uh, first in over 20 years employee of the year, employees of the year okay. awards, which we recognize people for, for that very thing, uh, in part for customer uh, how they treated and dealt with customers. Uh, but, the, but the answer is that this whole customer service thing is, is, is an ongoing dynamic process. Right. And uh, it's just not going to stop. But we need to step that up. Uh, and provide people with the tools. Um, you know, what occurred in the past and how people may have felt about the service they got was not the fault of the people who uh, who were working there. It's uh, it's it's the fault of, of, of people like myself who should be making sure they have the tools in which to be successful. And that's what we're doing right now. All right. So what what else uh, uh, is new and, and what can we look forward to in uh, 2018? A lot of really exciting things when it comes to at least our stores. Um, we're going to be doing a lot more the thematic promotions and uh, and sale promotions. And so we're working with suppliers now on making sure that we consistently throughout all 27 stores best recognize uh, holidays, for example, such as uh, those coming up, the holidays this year, you know, Christmas and New Year's, uh, St. Patrick's Day, Mother's Day, Valentine's Day, and on throughout the, the rest of the year. And we're going to do that on a consistent basis so that we do it well and customers are really excited when they see the kinds of products that are there. One great example of that was a McPaw promotion that we did mm. uh, a few months ago. And we did that in conjunction with McPaw, which is a local charitable organization for the safety and prevention for yeah. animals. We did that in conjunction with uh, Tito's Vodka. Uh, we did displays in our stores, and for every bottle that was sold, Tito's uh, donated uh, a dollar a bottle for that cause. We then had boxes, uh, uh, donation boxes at our um, checkout counters uh, for people to donate. But it was so successful during that promotion that we, in fact, kept those boxes for an additional month beyond so that uh, residents and customers could continue to contribute. That's an example of, of what we want to do in the future. Um, we're reallocating our floor space. Uh, it's interesting. We, uh, if you look at our sales in our stores, we sell primarily more spirits than we really do wine in terms of dollars. Yet we have allocated more space to to wine than than our spirits, and we're gonna we're gonna change that up. Uh, we're gonna present our beer in a different way and in a more exciting way. So we're gonna reallocate our our, our shelf space, our floor space, and our shelf space, and work with suppliers to make sure we've done the right thing. Um, that's fantastic. So we're going to take a short break and come back to talk about more of the exciting things going on at the 27 retail stores of DLC while shopping this holiday season. So don't go away. Talk about more of the exciting things going on at the 27 retail stores of DLC while shopping this holiday season. So don't go away. Washington, D.C.'s News Talk, 1450 AM, WOL, and 95.9 FM. Good morning. This WOL traffic and weather update brought to you by National Lutheran Communities and Services. 295 southbound, very slow from Eastern Avenue past East Capitol Street. Northbound 295 from the 11th Street Bridge is pretty slow as you make your way up toward Pennsylvania Avenue. On Route 50 inbound, you slow from 410 into town. The accident was right before the district line, and that's now cleared away. New York Avenue at Bladensburg Road Northeast. The short cycling traffic signal is still slowing things down there. National Lutheran Communities and Services honors, inspires, and supports choice and opportunity in service to seniors. Learn more about their 127-year-old mission at nationallutheran.org. 
Now your WOL weather forecast for today. Sunny to partly cloudy but cold and windy. High near 34. Cloudy overnight down to 30. Tomorrow, a mix of clouds and sun and a high around 40 degrees. Steve Hirschhorn for 1450 AM, 95.9 FM. WOL where information is power. Welcome back to Montgomery Mosaic on Talk Radio 1450 WOL. I'm Brian Roberts, and today I have the pleasure of talking to Bob Dorfman, the county's, the Montgomery County's Department of Liquor Control Director, about recent changes at the department. And so, Bob, let's continue. To run this business, uh, DLC has many management functions, sales and marketing, customer service, warehouse operations. We've talked about all of that a lot. Finance, information technology licensing, education, and training. We've talked a little less uh, uh, about all of those. So when you came in, did you change or reorganize the structure in order to get the results you were looking for? Yeah, I think uh, when you when you come into a new business, as I have in, in so many instances in my past, uh, the one thing you don't want to make are uh, organizational changes until you properly assess what it is the business needs to do so that whatever changes you do make are, are appropriate. And so, you know, being there now 10 months, uh, I think the key things that we've done, as I may have mentioned, as I did mention before, is that hiring the two new operations people and uh, making the differences that we've made in our warehouse was a major step forward. That's where many of you, your listeners, I'm sure, recall the problems that occurred in the past came as a result of the warehouse not delivering on time, not properly delivering all the products that were ordered, and in some cases not delivering product during the holidays that needed to be delivered. Uh, we've just made some significant changes uh, in the warehouse, and I think the two people that we brought in have made a big difference there. And then, of course, the senior mar marketing officer, and and I hope maybe even myself, uh, has made some difference in, uh, in how we're moving forward. But uh, those would be the, the, the things that we've changed in terms of this, the organization with bringing in those three people, including myself, but the structure will be, again, viewed over time to make sure we're addressing things as we change. So, I mean, have, have uh, uh, reporting relationships changed? Have responsibilities changed within uh, specific responsibilities, that kind of thing? Yeah, we're a lot more hands-on, I think. Um, okay. You know, in the very, in, in sort of in the distant past, uh, both our wholesale operations and retail operations were uh, headed up by one individual. And you'd have to sort of question, um, you know, the, the reasonableness of doing that. Uh, they're two very, very different aspects of the business, and the question would be is whether one person really has the experience and the knowledge to be able to properly manage both. So, you know, the decision was made to split that so that we had somebody okay. heading up our wholesale operations and somebody heading up our retail operations. Um, marketing is, a, again, another area in which uh, it's, we're overlaying that over the entire business. Um, my perspective on marketing has always been it's sort of the nucleus of all things, that everything we do has something to do with marketing, uh, whether it's how we operate operationally, it's whether how we operate financially, HR-wise, uh, product selection-wise, pricing-wise, it all relates to marketing. And I think that that's going to be like an octopus with its tentacles into everything that we do. As a former uh marketing manager myself i'm not going to argue uh with that point with uh, marketing's uh, centrality so we, we've talked a little bit about uh the importance of culture change um where so uh, take the temperature now you know where where are you in terms of uh uh you know where are we now you now versus you know where you'd like to be in terms of culture i think we've made some some great improvements in that area and, and you know when you when you start to measure yourself uh and how well you're doing but and you hear so many nice compliments now that we're getting from our residents who are visiting our stores or from licensees whom we're servicing and now being told about how noticeable those changes have been uh how how much supportive they are of the dlc and not only understanding it from a product purchasing standpoint, but also from uh, the standpoint of uh, the necessity for Montgomery County to be involved in that business and okay. why it's so important. Okay. So let me let me ask, what have you learned uh, that you didn't know uh, initially about the DLC? Not to sound flip, but everything, Brian. <laughs> okay. Everything. Okay. Uh, this was all new to me, and, uh, you know, I came in with uh, – with virtually little knowledge of the DLC, which I guess has helped me in many respects uh, in trying to better understand how this relates to the kind of businesses that I've been involved in in the past and what we're missing. Okay. And I think we're, we're, we're getting to fill those gaps. And, and so how, 
how uh, at 10 months in, you know, how's it feel to leave this department? How do you feel? Great. Great. Um, I guess my position in, 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 in being a member of the county, especially Montgomery County, which is just one of the finest counties to live in in this country, uh, the levels of service and, uh, that are provided here are, are just first class. And when you step back and you look, okay, well, that's the expectations that uh, the residents in this county and businesses in this county ought to expect. How does the DLC stack up to that? And of course, there were you know, some significant shortcomings. And I think then the challenge becomes, how do we close that gap and make this the best well-run business that we possibly can? And then add some other components to it that people are less likely to think about, such as public safety, which we can, you know, we can talk about. Um, but it's, it's getting this to be the, the, the type of business that we can be proud of. And so one day, uh, when I'm no longer here, I can look back and feel like uh, we've, we've added something pretty significant to uh, to the to the benefit of the residents of this county. So let's uh, talk about that public safety aspect, Bob. So how how does the system impact our quality of life in uh, in Montgomery County, and what role uh, does DLC play in public safety? I don't think that's an obvious uh, you know an obvious notion. It's the loss factor. I mean, people are just not familiar with. Uh, alcohol and uh, the regulations and uh, compliance issues that are involved. Uh, for those who talk about alcohol and talk about the DLC and not necessarily understanding or being supportive of it, lose sight. We're not a candy store. Uh, we nope. sell a highly regulated substance. And included in that comes the responsibility to ensure that we're providing the highest level of safety and health and wellness, uh, welfare to, uh, to, to the businesses and the residents of this county. And uh, I can just tell you from an experience level, uh, our licensing regulation and education uh, division of our department has been highly touted nationally about the jobs that we do in terms of how we uh, put people through the application process, uh, the kind of compliance that we provide to ensure and train licensees uh, in our own stores about how to properly uh, serve and uh, monitor the sale of alcohol and uh, in the education. We do alert training. We do all kinds of training for uh, businesses in this county uh, to ensure that they are doing the very best to make sure people aren't overserved. Uh, the people are of age uh, are, be, are able to buy alcohol, and those that are under 21 aren't. But we have, number one, the best record, uh, health, safe, health record in the state of Maryland, of any county in the state of Maryland. We have one of the best records when it comes to underage drinking and DUIs, not only in the state of Maryland, but in the country. Um, the head of our LRE uh, uh, division, Kathy Durbin, was just recently awarded the top regulator in the entire United States. And that has a lot to say with the emphasis that we place on public safety. But this whole public safety issue is so very, very important. And it, and it comes down to people who might look at the department and say, you know, and this is past discussion, but you know, what happens if this business were owned by somebody on a private basis? Or right. maybe we ought to look at you know, privatization of this business. There's a mandate, again, as I mentioned, for public safety to be an integral part of ensuring that the safety and the welfare of our residents are, are first and foremost. And to be honest with you, I do come from the private sector. And I do have a family that, that you know, I grew up here, uh, as my family did, for 36 years. And I cared about my son uh, being involved potentially in, in, a, in, a, in an accident that involved drinking. So it's not that I don't care, but if you want to ask me as a private business person, if I were the one responsible for this business and I own this business, and if you said to me, Bob, were you aware of the fact that DUIs are up or down versus last year or underage drinking is up or down versus last year, my response would be, it really doesn't doesn't figure into what I'm trying to do. You know, I'm trying to make money here. I'm, uh, uh, I'm trying. I have a responsibility to my shareholders and ensuring that uh, they get an adequate return. So there's a different level of interest. It doesn't mean that private business person doesn't care. It's just not. A, it's not front and center. Public safety is front and center with us, and I think everybody needs to recognize that. Again, we're dealing with a highly regulated substance. Okay, fantastic. Um, that commitment um, is really important and. Uh, I'm glad uh, I'm glad DLC is there to to take care of it. Now, in talking about uh, management structure, one thing uh, we may have skipped over is the importance of information uh, technology. Can you uh, talk a little bit about that? Um, how how uh, important 
you know, the, the software running the business is. Critical. Uh, the the warehouse up until about uh, up until about a year year and a half ago was what we would call a manual operated warehouse, which means that no technology was really employed uh, in the operations, which takes kind of takes you back to almost the 19th century. Um, that's how kind of far back that a manual wow. warehouse operation. Yeah, it's pretty it's pretty interesting and unique. So one of the one of the things that we had to do amongst others, we had to first reconfigure the warehouse. We had to add appropriate racking. We had to take product off the floor that no one was aware of what was sitting on that floor and where it was on the floor and when it was ordered where where it is you go to get the product to the customer. So we had to you know, improve our racking, which we did. We had to improve our fleet, our delivery fleet of trucks. Interestingly, up until about a year ago, of the 43 trucks that we had, the newest truck was about 20 years old. So most of our trucks were 20 to 30 years old. That provided a challenge in and of itself. You, know, yeah. you had leaking trucks, you had, pro you had trucks that weren't delivering product in the right way, and you had certainly delivery safety, deliver, uh, driver safety issues that we had to take into consideration. So we've already, we've already replaced half of our fleet with new trucks, and we have a plan to continue to replace that fleet until all, all of our trucks are, are relatively new. So now get into the technology portion. Um, there was no technology at all employed. Today, two, two important things have been done. The first is that we have scanning on what we receive in the warehouse. So when product comes into the warehouse, it's scanned, it's identified with a particular slot in the warehouse in which that product goes. But as importantly, it also identifies reserve areas in the warehouse where that product goes when the slots are filled. So we no longer have to run around the warehouse looking for product that, uh, that people tend to not be able to find. Uh, the second thing we've done is what's called voice picking. And we have the people who select our orders uh, picking the product by hearing something in their headphones over a computer, uh, which has created enormous efficiencies for us. Bob, I'm afraid that's all the time we have today. Thank you so much for coming by and being so frank with us. Remember, you can find more information about the DLC and its products and stores by visiting the website, MontgomeryCountyMD.gov slash DLC, and on Twitter and Facebook. I'd like to thank you for listening with us. So don't forget to tune in next month for another edition of Montgomery Mosaic on 1450 WOL. And remember, till next time, be good to yourself and others. And the words of the writer who said 99% of all problems can be solved by money. And for the other 1%, there's alcohol.